are. Okay, we are actually on our YouTube channel. That's the Living Water Amy Church channel where we're trying to build our subscribership. And I am going to make sure I hit okay, the record. We are actually uh -oh. on our YouTube channel. That's the Living Water Amy Church channel where we're trying to build our subscribership. And I am going to make sure I okay, hit the record. We are actually uh -oh. on our YouTube channel. That's the Living Water Amy. Okay, there we go. I had to go in and silence that and let me hit the record button to make sure we capture everything. All right. Well, praise the Lord. Uh, <laughs> we'll do a double take. Take two. Uh, we thank God for the opportunity once again to share in such an important topic on financial principles. And I believe Brother Parker is going to be talking about investing in retirement planning tonight uh, as a second uh, in the series that we've had uh, in this topical discussion of financial principles and uh, and he is uh, an expert. He is the one who initially shared with us or connected with us, both, both Lady Hope and I, uh, over 20 years ago when I was viewing and talking about uh, or looking at and reviewing the insurance costs and how I could offset the insurance costs from what we were paying as government or civil service employees, reducing that. And we were able to save significant dollars in the cost of insurance. As a matter of fact, we were able to get just as much insurance for a lot less by going through Brother Parker. And that allowed us to invest the money, that difference that we were paying. It gave us a little bit more flexibility and room to invest the monies, uh, the differences. And, and we thank God for what God has done over the years as we cast our bread upon the waters in, in multiple directions. In other words, we diversified our investments. And he's going to talk about a lot of that tonight. Most of you, uh, I've introduced him last week. You do know that he's a regional vice president. Uh, is that right? Regional vice president of Primerica. He's been doing this for over 15 years uh, plus now. And he and his wife have a wonderful thriving business. I, I'm just in awe of how God continues to bless them as I see them traveling around the world, enjoying their rest and respite as they get away uh, from the business of all that God has placed in their hand. You, how many of you know to whom much is given, much is required? And so he has been faithful uh, in the financial services business. And as Prime America has branched out and gone in several different directions uh, in financial services and beyond just insurance, he has been there gaining all of the knowledge and certifications necessary to uh, thrive in this business, in this arena. So we thank God for him and uh, Sister uh, uh, Tawanda uh, uh, Parker as well. And we thank God for all what they mean in the kingdom, as well as what they mean as far as educating us in the kingdom. So tonight, I'm not going to belabor the point. We're just going to pray, and then we're going to turn it right over to Brother Parker. Come on, let's pray. God, we thank you for the opportunity to learn once again, to absorb information that will benefit not only us, but our children's children. God, we thank you for the scriptures that point out how we should be wise stewards, but we also thank you for the application and experiences of those like Brother Parker and Sister Tawanda uh, of applying those scriptures and actually seeing them come to life. God, not only in their lives, but in the lives of those whom they touch, those who, who have networked and partnered with them through their business and, and those whom they have uh, served uh, in managing and helping to manage their finances. God, we pray that everyone on this line tonight receive knowledge, wisdom, and understanding when it comes to financial principles, when it comes to investing, when it comes to retirement planning. God, we ask right now in the name of Jesus that you have your way. We're here to receive. God, open us up that we might be willing and able to not only receive, but to apply what we learned tonight in Jesus' name. 
Amen. Amen. And amen again. All right, my brother, take it away. We got we got a full house coming online. I see Mother Burger. I see Dr. Harrell. I see Sister Emma. Um, of course, First Lady Hope and my sister Mary and her husband, Brother James. And of course, your lovely wife is online to make sure you don't. She's watching you like my wife was watching. Make sure you dot all the I's and cross all the T's. Amen. Come on, Brother Father. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Well, thanks. Thanks as always, uh, Pastor Ruff. And we definitely uh, uh, you know, appreciate your allegiance to Christ and what you stand for in ministry, uh, being a you know, strong man of God and just uh in, in godly pursuits and everything that you do. We we certainly appreciate you and we're humbled again to um you know bless this uh platform. Uh we don't take it lightly that you know you chose us to to again to be able to to honor God's word and 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 be able to fulfill um, some of the uh, biblical principles of 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 being a great financial steward, uh, but also being able to to teach you know openly on such a very important precious topic. Uh, so many of us unfortunately haven't been enlightened um, in these areas, uh, but one thing I do know that. Um, He's a, he is, we do serve an all-time God. You know, if, if you, you know, certainly uh, pour out your heart and you ask God for wisdom and guidance, man, he can do exceedingly abundantly above anything we can ask or think. So um, he said, he said, last shall be first. So uh, it doesn't matter how you start. The end is better than the beginning. So I know some of us are going to make a turnaround time, turnaround based on some of the things that that, that I'm going to impart tonight. So, um, you know, I am humble, uh, you know, again, and certainly um, I'm going to jump right into it. I'm going to step up a little bit tonight. So last week I was little, I was very elementary, very elementary, but I'm going to step, I'm not going to go over your head though. I'm going to, I'm going to stay, you know, above, above the pack, but I'm going to get a little bit more uh, intensified tonight to really kind of talk about um, some of these principles, because every day um, I deal with these areas. You know, we know that the har the harvest is plentiful. You know, labors are few. Uh, I, I thank God every day for being able to sow in His kingdom and and impart things in people's lives that that really are just uh, life changing. So tonight I'm gonna talk a little bit more about uh, investing and and getting into. Uh, more in the retirement principles. I know we we kind of talked about some of those areas last time. Um, let me give me a minute. I'm sorry. Let me just kind of go reference right where where I'm supposed to be, and that's not where I'm supposed to be. So anyway, uh, all righty. So uh, Pastor did tell you a little bit about myself again. You know, um, I'm married to that fine chick you see right there, to Wanda. Uh, you know, 20 years, you know, beautiful. Uh, our daughter just left here, you know, left our house talking about she, she needs something washed. I said, <laughs> the parenting never goes away, right? I'm like, there's a laundry mat up the street. <laughs> but, um, you know, blessed, proud parents of, of Ashley. We've been in business, been in this uh, wonderful business of serving people for uh, a great majority of time. But not only do we serve a client base, we also serve uh, other individuals, other associates that we teach and train. So jumping right in, talking a little bit about retirement. I think this obviously a very, very impactful, impactful topic. Okay. So these are just a, a plethora of areas that, that I'm a reference tonight. You know, just to, just to name a few, we provide access to solutions um, from some of the most world, most recognizable companies, you know, uh, you know, we, we, we show people how to really prepare for retirement in a, in a lot of different areas, you know, mutual funds and annuities and, you know, managed accounts and uh, tax deferred accounts, you name it, so on and so forth. Um, so when we're talking about planning for retirement, though, OK, so whether you're retiring now or a few years later, OK, um, you know, it's really important to identify what it means to be on track. You know, no matter where you are, there's going to be some things that come along the way. But um, but you can learn how to avoid the, the the basic mistakes that so many others have encountered. What do you mean by that, uh, Derek? Well, look at this. Underestimating the number of years 
you know, your retirement might last. You know, I've, I've encountered people who, who are above and beyond where they need to be. And they say, hey, you know, I don't think I have enough. And I say, look, you're able to retire tomorrow based on some of these things you're already employing. Um, but because they, you know, were able to understand some of the basics, they were able to get out. But look at this. Um, you don't want to withdraw money too soon, right? Um, not understanding market risk. Sometimes that plays a significant part in what we do. But spending your assets down incorrectly, you know, that could make a, a significant difference. So we're gonna we're gonna talk about some of these some of these areas um, here tonight. But the important thing is when we're talking about retirement. We want to get that middleman out the way, okay? Let me just set the record. We want to get that middleman out the way, Pastor. People say, who's that middleman? <laughs> I talked a little bit about that middleman last week. He, uh, he, he continuously gives you your kids suckers every time you go in there, right? And that's just an <laughs> a indirect, you know, <laughs> quotient that he's giving your kids that, that's really meant for you. So we want to bypass the middleman. We know that most people harbor this philosophy. They think that uh, the bank is, is everything um, surrounding their financial wherewithal, meaning if we go in our communities, those are some of the most well-established institutions, right? Um, if they're going to build an infrastructure, trust and believe the bank's going to be the first entity that's going to arrive. So... So mm -hmm. they're there for a lot of different reasons, right? Um, but we're gonna we're gonna bypass the bank when it comes to putting our money away for the future, right? Going into the global economy, we're gonna bypass the middleman. Why? Because he's not gonna be on our best interest. He's gonna be on his best interest, but he's mm -hmm. not gonna be on he's not gonna be on the best interest of 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 everyone else, um, especially your money. So we're gonna bypass that. So let's talk a little bit about um, some of the uh, different investment phases, because this is very, very important. OK, uh, particularly when people are saving, you know, for retirement and they've established that, hey, you know what? Um, all is well that begins well. OK. And what, is, what do I mean by that? Well, you want to start putting money away. OK. In the accumulation phase. Well, what's what's the accumulation phase? Well, as early as possible. You know, um, you know, it's oftentimes when uh, I ask people, when did they start saving for retirement? I get a, a lot of different um, answers. Some people say, hey, I went to a job and, you know, um, I had no other choice. Everyone was talking about it. Some people say, well, I just thought that was the thing to do. So I signed up, you know, and then some people, they ain't started and they're in their 30s. <laughs> and I said, well, What's going to happen? You think they're going to actually take care of you? It's not going to happen. There's no thing called a pension here. So accumulation phase just means we're going to start as early as possible, okay? Really putting money away. So that's when your money's going to grow. It's going to accumulate, right? That's why it's called accumulation. Well, the protection phase. Well, what does that mean? Well, hey, Brother he's... Parker. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, but it looks like you're talking about slide 47, maybe in 48, but the one that we see is the three, the one I see is a three-legged stool. So oh Lord. Let's make, sure we, let's make sure we're on the same page with you. <laughs> and, and I would ask the audience if if you have questions to kind I, I believe Brother Parker. Are you seeing that now? Are you the seeing end. that? Yes. I'm seeing okay. the investment phase now. But I All believe right. Brother Parker will give us time near the end to I would ask you write your questions now and be prepared to. Uh, ask those when he summarizes his uh, his brief. Thank you for that correction. See, I'm 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 in Mars and and y'all saying y'all in Venus and I'm up. Where where am I at? So thanks, thank you for bringing me back. So so as I was alluding to these three different phases: the accumulation phase, the protection phase, and then there's um, the protection phase. Just to elaborate a little bit, that just has to do with more of the preparation. Okay, so. We're, we're going to really be in um, assets that are centered around um, maintaining or preserving the capital. OK, so we don't want to lose money um, in, in this phase here because we're obviously talking about retirement. That's why we, if you work for the federal government, usually they'll offer classes, you know, particularly like five years out 
you know, for retirement. So, because uh, you're in the protection phase, we're talking a lot about that. Bob you know, um, is there is that a question? Sorry, I'm sorry. Okay, <laughs> somebody came off. Okay, and then lastly is is the distribution phase. That's where we're gonna that's where we're gonna pay out. That's where we're gonna identify exactly how we're gonna get our money. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna be distributing money. So if we're if we've had our money in the thrift savings plan you know, over a period of time and we're older than 59 and a half and we're retired, you know, um, basically we're going to have, we're going to have to work through a distribution of, of exactly how to get our money. Um, or if, if we've had money in IRAs, uh, again, the distribution phase is, is obviously important. So all three are, are very important and uh, it's really important to, to identify, you know, those areas. So you can determine, as it says here, the kind of retirement life you lead. Now, if I ask the most general question for most people, what do you, where do you see yourself in retirement? Okay. Most people typically say things like, well, I want to be walking on the beach. Um, I, I want to, you know, spend time with my family, right? I want to, I want to be able to do the things that I want to do, right? So the important thing is um, you don't have to be great at at any particular investment, uh, but you do have to start in order to get ahead of the game. So so that's the important thing is is all is well that begins well. You have to essentially start to get moving in the right direction. So let's talk a little bit about you know um, looking at at what age do you need to retire? How much savings do you need to have? Um, and then have you ever considered some of the what ifs? Well, what do you mean what ifs? Well, there's some what ifs in 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 the marketplace. In other words, there's a thing called longevity risk. Okay, I'm I'm allude to a little bit bit about those in a, in a minute. There's also a thing called market risk. Okay, and then there's a the last thing is there's a thing called inflation risk. Things obviously that you buy today are not worth the same tomorrow. Okay, so so all these factors come into play. Well, longevity risk. Well, they say one of the worst things is for anyone to outlive their money, right? You know, um, now we we have a thing, unfortunately, in our economy. It's called reverse parenting. Parenting. Anybody know what that is, right? <laughs> so, Pastor, it used to be a time where our parents would raise us and we'd go out and raise our families. Now, guess what? We're having to go back and grab mom and them right? Mom and dad in their 60s, 70s, and and help them live out their lives because this part wasn't done accurately. So longevity risk, you know, is, is, is again, outliving your money, okay? So we know now looking at, look at this, they say the average male now is 77, okay? With average woman is 82. We know, generally speaking, women do outlive men. And these numbers are going up in significant portions in different parts of the country. So we have to consider that as far as longevity risk. Now, what about market risk? Okay. So market risk just has to do with, you know, making sure your portfolio is, is diversified properly. You know, no one can be sure when there's going to be a market that's going to surge that we call a bull or when the market is going to come to a stampede such as a bear. So so a bull, as it alludes to here, gets really, you know, I'm, I'm giving you some market terms. So when you hear these, some of these smart people talk to you and they see and they use these 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 rate these these phrases and these acronyms, just understand a bull is usually a prolonged period, you know, where things are really, you know, um surging. So think of it like this. People see the market like you know, just over the last couple of weeks, the market has kind of it's kind of gone down, right? Like, in other words, things surge and things go down. Well, it's kind of gone down, but most people don't realize that the market has done over forty percent over the last year. See, we're in a we're in a bullish market that has a lot of potential. There's segments and areas where money is continuously turning over. It's growing. The economy is rising, right? Okay, but look here, a bear market. It says it's a prolonged, okay, which investment prices fall. And then there's pessimism, right? You know, 
You hear all the news pundits talking about what's wrong, what's going on with the economy, right? Um, you know, we got a and we got a imposed recession coming, forthcoming, right? So inflation's happening. So these are just two basic terms that that oftentimes are used interchangeably. Um, but understand that they work to your advantage. Okay. So looking here, this is just really simplified. I just want to make this simple. Investing for long term. Do you realize? From investing from as early as 1939 all the way current year to date, there's been more positive periods, Pastor, of investing than there have been negative periods. Isn't that something? So what if I told you over 80 years of investing, almost 100 years of putting your money away, that there's more periods where your money is going to be progressive and it's going to grow and accumulate than there are negative periods. Isn't that something? See, history tends to repeat itself with these things. And, and we need to become more inclined and educated versus you turn it on the Wall Street or you turn it on the news. And that's all they're talking about is how much money, you know, was lost in the market last week. Or you turn on the news and they're telling you all the negative things that are surrounding what's going on in investing. So even though it, you may have some negative periods that occur, there's more positives that outweigh uh, the negatives. Now, there's a last thing is called inflation risk. Okay, so inflation, we can't control that, right? They, we know that things today, you know, especially living in the DMV. Do they know? Do you know statistically? They say to live in the DMV as a single individual and occupy your own place, okay, your own dwelling outside of mom and them. You need to, on average, be making between seventy to seventy-five thousand dollars a year. Isn't that something? Now we see why there's such a surge of young adults moving back home, or they're trying to they're trying to collaborate and move with each other because you just can't afford it. So inflation obviously has an impact in terms of you know, the goods and services. So things today are just surging. So that has a lot to do with you know, um, the way we invest our money as well. A lot of us just can't afford to put away as much money as we once were able to because of the rising costs uh, in inflation. So Here's a big question when it comes to retirement. And this is, it says here, are you financially ready to retire? Well, retirement is an, is an ongoing conversation. You don't just come to the end of the road. You get in your late 50s or 60s and all of a sudden ask the question, am I ready to retire? No, it's a question that you're going to occupy and harbor throughout periods of your life. So look at this lifestyle expectations okay so that just basically has to do with life life uh, uh some of the questions i'd asked earlier where do you plan to live you know what's your standard of living how much money do you think you'll need in the, in the course of retirement but where you live right now and the things that you do now if you're younger these are obviously going to have a significant impact see when I met when I met Pastor, he 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 referenced this point a little bit earlier. When I met him early in his life, he was an investor, and I and I knew at the, at that particular point, I said, "Wow, his significant uh, place and things and choices are going to be so much afforded to him later on in life because he started early and he was able to do certain things that oftentimes people tend not to put off." Like in other words, if you put off buying that larger home or buying that larger, you know, vehicle and doing some of the things to pre prep yourself so you can have uh, a lot better uh, lifestyle of living later, that can significantly make a difference. Look at this estimated sources of income. So uh, nowadays, people need multiple sources of income in order to to continuously doing these things. And I alluded to here just as far as living expenses, really ascertaining how much money uh, based on my lifestyle right now. See, most people typically look at the retirement 
um, aspect. When you get a job, uh, they, they give you a 401k paperwork. They give you the health care planning paperwork. Instead of assessing your lifestyle, you need to assess these things first and then base your lifestyle after you've accommodated and done the necessities. So very, very, very important thing. Discovering how much money we need. Now, one of the things that we do uh, when I'm helping someone uh, retire, and it's interesting, Pastor, because I sat with a young man just, just a, a week ago, very relatively short period of time, and he said, you know what? He says, I'm a barber. I want to I want to start saving for retirement. And he says, you know what? I'm 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 in my late 20s. I know there's going to come a point in time where I'm going to need to do some things differently. Um, I'm self-employed. I've seen a lot of young men come through my shop and, you know, they're they're in their later 40s or 50s and they don't have enough money. And I don't want to be that person. So the biggest question I said, well, we need to identify um you know, how much do you need to have saved? In other words, it's kind of hard to hit a target if we don't know what you're aiming for. So look in here, uh, the big basic question is, have you uh, have you accumulated enough assets for retirement? So if I'm talking to a young man who's in his 20s, or if I'm in, talking to someone who are in their 50s, those are the same questions. We're going to pinpoint how much do we need, okay? So look in there, once we identify that, we're going to look at, well, how many years do, does he have to retire? So in his situation, he had 30 years. So he could be very, very much, much more aggressive to put away money than, say, um, his 50-year-old counterpart, okay? Um, current retirement assets, okay? So for him, he was just starting out. So, of course, he didn't have anything, but he did have a thing here. It's called a monthly income, okay? So we had money that we can put away, okay, and he had very little overhead, so his expenses were very low, okay? And then we devised what is called a, um, an asset allocation. That just has to do with a portfolio of investments to really help him. So when you're planning for retirement, it's important, and I've said this before, always work with someone who has the heart of a teacher. Always work with someone who can teach you basic principles that can really outline basic principles that can help you get ahead. And more importantly, I, I should preface that and say basic biblical principles, because the first one is not paying yourself first, is giving God his first share, give him a tenth, okay, and your offering, and then ultimately begin to build with the 90% that's left okay, that God has entrusted you. And it's amazing what he can do in your life if, if, if you work according to that. Oftentimes, I will encounter people that are not tithing, that are not giving offerings, and they'll ask me, they'll say, you know what, um, you know, what is your advice on that? Well, you know, should I put money away? And, and I said, you know what, I really can't tell you how to do this unless you're doing it the right way, unless you're giving God a tenth, unless you're paying your tithes and your offerings. Because, you know, he says, trust me in these, right? And and watch and see what God can do in your life if, if you're doing those right things. So what will I be spending money on? So these are some different areas that we always have to tie in as we evaluate our investment portfolio, as we evaluate how we're going to save. Well, look in here. Um, what about Social Security? Well, do, do you have a Social Security that's coming? Have you paid in for 40 quarters? Okay. What about employer pension payments? Well, we know that there's a, only about a, a third of people in America who still get pensions. That's, that's obsolete. What about qualified retirement plans? Okay. Have you found now that there's still even a lot of employers that are getting away from even retirement plans, it's kind of scary. In other words, they say, we're taking away the benefits, but we'll pay you the income. So people are going to have to become more and more savvy in terms of knowing how to put away money, you know, as it comes uh, 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 to put away for retirement. Very, very important. Are there other incomes um, that tie in that you may have? So, so these are basically some 
some ideal income sources, right, that, that we want to look at. Now, we also obviously have to look at your expenses, okay? So, so looking at, you know, planning out expenses. Well, the important thing is, well, what are some of your expenses right now? So, you know, what's interesting is that a lot of people have not identified the expenses that they anticipate in the retirement. And unfortunately, oftentimes you find people in scenarios where they retire and then three years later, they're back at work because we didn't plan these things out accordingly. So we need to obviously uh, plan out and identify what do we anticipate some of our expenses here. And that's through doing a financial analysis where we can assess these things and plan it out. You know, Proverbs 20, was it 22? One says steady plotting brings about prosperity. And that's very, very important. 20, I'm sorry, Proverbs 21, five says steady plotting brings about prosperity. So we have to make sure that we plan accordingly. Now, I shared a little bit of this last week. The three-legged stool basically says that, well, Social Security, that's the first form of uh, retirement infrastructure, okay? Most people don't know that Social Security was never created to become a legitimate retirement source. It was only created to become a supplemental retirement source. So looking here, the average Social Security is only about $1,200. So living in the DMV, that certainly is not significant at all. So Social Security, now looking at the second one, company pensions, I mentioned only a third of institutions out there offer company pensions. And then lastly, personal savings. So all together, all three legs represent a stable source of income. So this was a collaborative effort or a collaborative concept where we can have all of our um um, vehicles working simultaneously for us. That's what they were created for. Unfortunately, we have a lot of people uh, that don't occupy two of the legs. So we collapse this leg, the company pension, which is not offered, and our personal savings is certainly insignificant. You can you can you can expect, okay, why there's so much rhetoric that's talking about defunding or or a broken social security system. So many people, right, are are pulling into social security, right? A benefit that is that's hard to withstand. So we have to do something about it. And that's by teaching and helping people are retired. Now one of the biggest retirement expenses for a lot of us, okay, is is healthcare. Okay. A lot of times many people do not uh want to retire or want to retire off off of, of what they currently have because such rising costs of healthcare. You know, I'm I'm very blessed and fortunate that my wife worked in the federal government. So of course she carried the health care with her in her retirement. Praise God, hallelujah, right? <laughs> but we know for a lot of us, that's not the answer, right? Many people now are finding that they have to purchase their own health care which can be very expensive. So, so we have to find ways to, to really modify or to tackle healthcare uh, just so we can uh, really engage in an enjoyable retirement. So that's a very, very big concern for, for a lot of people. Now, looking here, this is just basically showing you uh, how your retirement truly matters. Now, I'm just going to show you this right here, okay? Because this is very important when we're talking about uh, market performance, okay? So this is just basically showing you two different retirees, okay? One basically has money in what we call a bear market, and one another one has money in what we call a bull market. So just think of it, one as a market that's appreciating, and then you got it. Another one that the money is depreciating. Now look here, look at this. Can you imagine if you retired off of a half million dollars of income, Pastor, and you're going to pull out $25,000, okay? Um, look in here, you're going to pull out $25,000 a year, which is ultimately saying, hey, 
I'm going to live off $2,000 a month, assuming, hey, my mortgage is paid off. I'm going to live off that $2,000 and do the things that I need to do. Now, if you look, if you, if, if you look here, this person is getting a 28% return in a bullish market, doing very well. Look at that. They're pulling out that $25,000, but look how their money's rising. So we go 10 years and they got $611,000. But look over here. If we didn't plan properly, we didn't put str strategically put our money in the right places. And look at this. The market is bearish. It's In other words, it's going down. It's losing money. We pull out $25,000 a year in 10 years. Look at this. We only got $399, almost $400,000 left. It's often wonder why people sometimes are talking about going back to work. That'll make you say, I want to go back to work. So, so we have to look at these, these areas here in terms of not just what we've accumulated, but where is the money? Uh, where are we going to have the money? Where are we going to keep the money along the way as we begin to withdraw? That really matters. Now, looking here at different tax treatments uh, for saving, every individual that's on this call, okay, if you qualify, you need to have money set aside into what we call um, IRAs, particularly a Roth IRA. Okay. If you don't qualify for a Roth IRA, you can do a thing that's called a non deductible IRA. Okay. So you can do a non deductible IRA. And then on the back end, we can do what is called a, a conversion to a Roth. But the, the tax laws are so favorable for individuals. Okay. Putting money away. So if you're under the age of, uh, uh, 50 years of age in 2024, you can put away $7,000 in a Roth IRA. So what that means is if you held this account for five years, okay, you're older than 59 and a half, this money is tax deferred, okay? You can't deduct it, but here's the thing, it's tax free. So that means if, if I put away continuously, let's just say, uh, I started 40 and I put seven grand, seven grand, seven grand. And let's just say I accumulate $300,000 over the next 20 years. That means I got $300,000 of tax-free money that I'm able to pull from. And you know what's interesting is there's no mandatory distributions at the age of 73. I don't have to like, I don't have to do an RMD. I don't have to pull money out. And then there's, of course, the traditional, which is another option, okay, for someone who doesn't qualify for a Roth, okay? And then on the back end, we can still convert this money over. But these laws are very, very favorable. And every individual, people ask me all the time, hey, how can I put away more money? I'm not sure about my 401k. I'm not sure about what my school system is offering. Set up a Roth IRA. Very, very favorable, okay? Because looking here in the retirement years, this is just a survey that 73% of American Pre-retirees say they plan to work, um, you know, for pay during retirement. There's a lot of people nowadays that, like we said earlier, they're living longer. You know, they don't anticipate just completely stopping work. You know, we know the actuary statistics don't work favorably for people who stop work and go home and pull out, right? <laughs> you know, we know, uh, biblically speaking, retirement was a punishment. It's not, it's not something that the Lord wanted us to just stop and do nothing. But look at this, more and more retirees, look at this, 35% of them say they retired earlier than planned because of hardships uh, such as health problems, disabilities, and things of that nature. So, so we have people from both ends of the spectrum making choices. And then I love this right here because this is a question that I'm oftentimes asked, Pastor, how should I spend my money in retirement? Well, as slowly as possible. <laughs> but looking here, this is just looking at a strategic way. Let's just say you put your money away. You've done some of the things I've talked about and you're ready to retire and you're ready to make withdrawals. OK, how should I spend my money? Well, the first area we're going to spend is taxable assets. So things in uh, stocks, bonds, non-qualified mutual funds, we're going to spend all those things first. Okay. And then next, we're going to move over to our tax 
deferred assets like our traditional IRAs, our 401ks. We're going to we're going to get those. And then the last area we're going to attack as far as spending, okay, is our Roth IRAs. As a, as we mentioned, we want these these monies to last for a long period of time, so we want to harbor them as much and often as we can because there's really two different types of accounts and I set these up for a lot of people. Um, you know, uh, not just in retirement, but having an emergency account and then basically having a, a spending account, really helping people spend appropriately, okay, um, as, as we engage in uh, planning. I think I alluded to last week, there's really three different accounts you need to have set up. You need to have an emergency account, you need to have a wealth building account, and then you need to have an intermediate account that's uh, in place as well, and that will help you uh, accomplish the things that we need to do. So looking at the yeah. different um, uh, and, uh, vehicles that we talked about, uh, well, Derek, what are, where I'll put this away? You, you talked about some things. Well, we want to put money away in mutual funds, okay? Mutual funds are professionally managed, okay? Um, they're relatively safe. So if you're putting money in like a 401k, uh, those are generally mutual funds, okay? Um, so so mutual funds obviously are going to pay you a better rate of return than the banks or credit unions and things of that nature. OK, um, but there's some things that you need to know about mutual funds. OK, like in other words, you can get a, what, a thing called a prospectus. Uh, you can pull up mutual funds there. They, they trade, you know, on the thing called the Nasdaq. So in other words, if, if you, there's a particular mutual fund that you're concerned or you want to know more about, you get a thing called their ticker symbol and you can just put it in your Google, put it in a Google browser and, and it'll pop up and it'll tell you everything about it. So the typical mutual fund, as it says, it has over 150 stocks. OK, so so there's a lot more safety. OK, with mutual funds. Now, there's another thing called managed investments, okay? So these are usually um, more of like investment professionals. They'll get more into managed accounts, okay? So you have to work with a financial advisor, okay, to really help you appropriate um, ideal solutions as far as um, dealing with um, some of these different accounts. And then lastly, people often ask me about what are variable annuities or what are annuities, OK, now there's there's some pros and there's some cons uh, associated with annuities. OK, so just uh, understand that all funds, all of these, they have a thing called fees. OK, so so typically if we're going to help anybody invest, we're going to identify exactly, well, what are your fees? OK, so what are, what are the fees associated with putting money away? So if we're going to put money in an annuity. It's going to have a fee. Typically, the fees are going to be a little bit more higher, okay? But they're going to have um, more guarantees in, in annuities, okay? What do I mean by that? Well, kind of like think of like a, a CD. A CD or certificate of deposit is a guarantee. It means it's a component where you won't lose your money. Um, so annuities have those types of guarantees associated with that a lot of retirees uh, tend to favor. And sometimes people are willing to pay a fee in exchange for certain guarantees, but they're not for everybody. Okay. But it is uh, something that's available. And then there's a thing, of course, uh, called uh, fixed annuities. Okay. So fixed annuities. Okay. That's, that's another entity that has to do with more of a, the fixed component. And I'll, I'll pull up right here just in the event we do have any questions, there is, of course, my contact information. Um, I can be reached uh, directly, um, or you can reach me via email, um, or you can even uh, contact myself uh, through my website, and I'll be happy to uh, re reply back. And um, the service that I do offer, Pastor, uh, is complimentary. People ask me, um, uh, what is your advisor fee? Do I have to pay you money up front to sit down with you to be um, advised? And, and that question is no. Um, the companies that I associate or affiliated with, 
those companies actually compensate me for helping people um, engage into some of those different vehicles that we outline here tonight. So, so a little bit more comprehensive discussion we had here tonight. Hopefully, I didn't I didn't put anybody to sleep. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, but I'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have. No, let me first thank you again for uh, sharing the information. It's a lot of information uh, to take in at once, but I pray that uh, we can have this, maybe have this available for us later on the, the presentation uh, so folks can look over it again. But I do want to thank you uh, for sharing the information. A lot of great information in there. And so if anyone has questions at this time about anything that Brother Parker's covered, please ask them now. I have a few comments, but I will hold my comments and 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 listen for your questions instead. Okay. So I'll start with a question because it's always harder to ask the first question. So good evening, Derek. Thank you for the information. So How if someone was first reading lady, this, lady, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm well, thank you. So if someone was listening to this and they were overwhelmed by all of the information you just provided, they're a neophyte and they were like, I don't know what he's saying. <laughs> what is the basic thing that you would tell an individual starting out yeah. just to get started? Yeah, the first the first thing I would um, you know, tell them, of course, pray for pray for guidance. OK, um, because, um, you know, there's there, there are certain um things in literature uh, that appear to be very comprehensive and overwhelming. Um, but there, there, there are a lot of simplistic material that, it, that it is available. Um, there's investment for dummies, okay? Um, there's a, a, a lot of churches that embrace, uh, like, like what pastor's doing here, and financial literacy. Um, even some churches now, are, they, they offer a curriculum um, you know, classes where they can teach um, and learn these principles. Um, I know Dave Ramsey has has a, a, a platform that he goes around um, achieving financial peace. Uh, there's there's a lot of different areas. So um, my 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 comment to that person would be: um, do your best to present yourself as fully approved, a workman who need not be ashamed. Right, it's Timothy. And, and that just has to do with studying, right? Study, study yourself through, be, be diligent in, in finding out what you need. And ultimately, um, um, those answers will come to you, okay? And, and then secondly, um, I would seek out someone who has the heart of a teacher who can, who can begin to teach them those things. Like if, like, like if, if Pastor Ruffin was my pastor, I'm gonna tell you right now, if he was my pastor, OK, I would say, wow, he has a series on financial literacy, so he must have some acumen. He must have some insight on 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 financial matters. So I would seek him out and, and ask, you know, and, and there's there's a there's a lot of great men of God who, who know this stuff and, and and they can guide you. They could even maybe, you know, give you some self teaching to really learn these things. So hopefully that's not too loaded. <laughs> Study and then, mm -hmm. and then seek out someone who, who, who can help you. That that's a great place to be. But, but but I would think at the I guess you know, I'm about action. So if if they're asking the question, I guess would would you tell them to start somewhere, like start saving something, like or start just start, I guess maybe. Yeah, you don't have to, yeah. Yeah, the, mind, okay. the 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 attitude is you don't have to be great to start. You do have to start in order to be great. So right. yeah, okay. start start something. So yeah, um, usually uh, you know when you start um, saving anything, it's 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 enhancing the behavior. Okay. You know, um, it's it's oftentimes we find many people, and that happens for me. I, I I find a lot of clients that are investing in four hundred one k's, and they don't have they have no idea whatsoever they're putting their money into, but they've done it. Why they do it? Well, because somebody along the way has told them to do it, and they've trusted the process. So, so that there helps enhance that behavior. Yes. No. Yes. So, 
I, I'll share an axiom that I've always used and and, and I, I, I found it to be true. Mm -hmm. um, I used to believe and people tell me, well, I can't afford to invest. Wow. I can't afford to invest my money. And I will tell them clearly, you cannot afford not to invest your money. If you never put your money to work for you, you will always have to work for your money. Wow. And so you want to make sure that you're investing, even if it's $25 or $50 into a mutual fund, you want to get in there and start investing in those low uh, expense ratio mutual funds like Vanguard and Fidelity. They have some of the lowest rates uh, on the market. You want to be in those index funds. If you're a government employee and you've invested in TSP funds, that's what the TSP invest in. <laughs> they, they're the lowest rate. Because they have they they hold their expense ratios lower than uh, what the market does. Yep. So but they're investing in index funds. That's exactly what they're investing in. So I mean, if if it works for the government and it's working for government employees uh, in their in their uh, full well in their TSPs, which is like a four hundred one k program, then it'll work for you. You cannot afford not to. You got to set some money aside and do it. Yeah, and, and and that's that's a great that's a great point. Thank you know, thank you for for sharing that. That's that's, that's really profound. Um, you know, I often find sometimes hope these these questions sometimes can be conflicting. Uh, it's kind of like voting. It's almost you know you hear the mantra, "Well, I, I'd rather not vote because it's it, it's just so conflicting. It's 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 loaded with a lot of rhetoric that doesn't apply to me. So I just rather not vote." And similarly, if seeing people say that as far as investing, you know, where it's just so, I just can't afford not to say, well, to pastor's point, you have to choose. Yes, you do. You you can't afford not to um, as, as much more. So I'd rather err on doing it than erring on not doing it. So. Please, other questions from the audience, if you have them, please ask them now. First lady, you got another question? No, I was going to say why they're thinking about it. <laughs> no, I was going to ask one why they were thinking about it, but I don't want to take ahead. up the time for <laughs> No, one thing I was going to say, um, because one, I work in the federal government, and two, you're right, they tell you to put your money in because they match, right? And not everybody does a matching thing, but it makes no sense not to put your money in if somebody's going to match it, right? That's that's easier to say than do. And so if you start out, you don't miss the money. Um, but I, I think sometimes the 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 thought is not that people will say, I can't afford to, to do it. I think there is fear in what they're doing because we it seems to be very complicated. Everything that you just went over on those slides makes sense to me, but it could be very, very complicated and daunting for a person that just says, look, I literally, if I say $50, where should I put this $50? And somebody tell me the best place for this $50. And so that's that may be some of it too, to debunk some of the mystery right behind it what what happens with them saving. So that's just my thought process on that. Yeah. And I don't have an easy way to explain it to them other than you can't afford not to, but then they're going to say, well, what should I do? Where should it go? <laughs> you know, those type of questions, I think are some of the initial questions people have. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I agree. Um, I'd rather be one of those that, like you say, um, you know, put money away for years, not knowing <laughs> and ended up somewhere fortunate as opposed to not putting anything away for years for fear of, you know, what, what may take place, you know, um, uh, pastor alluded to a lot of places, uh, particularly safe havens where you can work, where you can start, you know, um, you know, I can think even when I learned about just individual stocks, I, I was one of those individuals. Um, I didn't know. And then I, I just happened to pick up a resource and it talked about drips you know, and I was like, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> and it said dividend reinvestment plans. And they and then it had and then I, I I pulled it up on the Internet and it had a it had a ton of companies that were allowing you to put away fifty dollars a month. And I ended up investing in this this company I didn't know nothing about that I drove by every day called mobile. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and then, you know, years later, <laughs> That same company merged with Exxon. And I said, my, 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 look what has happened here. 
Yeah. Won't he do it? Is what you say. <laughs> <laughs> Won't he do it? <laughs> so, th so those things happen when you, when you, when you take that act, that action stance that you're, that you're alluding to of doing something about it, doing something is, is oftentimes much, much more attractive than not doing anything at all. Absolutely. Anyone else um, with questions or? <laughs> Well, what I found in uh, in this experience is that uh, the most people that I find having a problem with savings are usually people on the lower income scale getting started for anything because they're the one that feels that they don't have the money to invest. Uh, so I think it's natural for us to put in them things like RAs, which is which is a simple investment. Not only is it simple, it gives them a restriction that keeps them from pulling this money out that can make it more of a long term until they have that discipline to invest in other things like mutual funds. So when we see people that are investing at Starbucks and going there buying a $4 cup of coffee every day, and they are spending $160 a month on coffee. Wow. Wow. And 12 times that is $1,910, which they could have put in the IRA. Come on, brother Carl. So until we start talking to that simplicity, we can't talk about mutual funds. We can't talk about variables. We can't talk about getting young folks to understand what invested difference is until those that we see now got kids raising kids. So they don't understand that Hey, I got three kids I've, I've I've made. And if I leave here tomorrow, just got on the street, you left them uh, in, 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 in inability to take care of their kids. So until we get that down, and we have to start at a very low scale, and that's even on people at middle income. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. No, that's 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 a that's a great point, you know, and we uh hmm. I, I just can't see uh, going to people who really needs that help. You know, you can go to somebody making two hundred thousand dollars a year, hundred thousand dollars a year, <laughs> and they got a lot more discretionary income. Right. Because half of them in the casinos, okay. And even those who are making no money is in the casinos, thinking that they they'll go in there and spend a thousand dollars in one month and work at McDonald's. <laughs> so, and so, so we got to deal with that. And so that's where we find out where I think you have to start at. Yeah, you're right, brother Carl, in that you got to change the mentality and mindset of people because we are a show first type of community. Sure. I'm going to show my wealth. I'm going to wear it. I'm <laughs> going to drive it. I'm going to show it in that way. But you're showing things that are depreciating that, that don't bring value, true value to you. You go out People go out and buy these fancy cars and live in apartments. Go out and buy a hundred thousand dollar car and don't have equity in a place. They're paying some, so it's a mentality that has to change. Uh, that that is certainly something we had, we speak to as pastors. We have to change that mindset and mentality. Through and the scriptures teach those things. The scriptures talk about those things. So definitely have to change the mindset. And the other part of it is what you shared. Even if it doesn't make a difference whether you're making $20,000 a year, $200,000 a year, yeah. the principle of in, and the mindset of investing is still the same. And I'll share this with you. When I first met uh, First Lady Hope, although I had invested money, I wasn't in the best of financial shape. But what I did have was a sense of and a habit of investing. It had taken root in me. There was no way that I was going to go back to where I was financially, indebtedness, credit card debt, things of that nature. I knew I, in order for me, in order for me and my wife and my family to prosper and succeed, so that we could be a blessing not just to our children but to our children's children, I had to maintain the mindset of investing uh, and and not spending money on cars and things. I, I want those things; they're nice. I want them, but I couldn't afford to do that. Because my mind said it had to be on invest investment first, 
Everything else evolved, evolved around that. Home, uh, the type of home we lived in, everything else evolved around that. Even in, in the real estate portion of our portfolio, it was looking to invest. And so I'm tight now, I'm trying to tell you. Tight it's now. not tight. Right. It, it's, 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 it's a mindset. It's That's a mindset. Where you're right. It's a mindset. And I, so let, I, me I'm also, joking. let me also say this. You've been a beneficiary of that mindset. Um, <laughs> we have together. So let me also say this. Folks talk about Social Security. Uh, and so there are proposals on the table right now from some political parties to raise the retirement age for Social Security. Now, this is not for those who are already retired, but those who are uh, working uh, up to age 70. That's yes. the first thing. The second thing is you need to understand the history of Social Security. When FDR put this in place, it wasn't for people who look like you and me. That's right. It was for the poor working what the poor working white class and what the U u.s government did was subsidize them into middle class 65 they purposely excluded jobs that were in agriculture and in uh domestic work and that was 70 percent of what we did during that, that time frame in the 30s you know after it, it, when they first introduced Social Security. And it's a, it's an insurance. <laughs> Remember that, it's an insurance. And it was never meant to take care of you in your in totality. It was meant to give a leg up for the poor working white class. That's why now that more people who don't look like the original intent of Social Security are drawing it and, the way, and they can see into the future projections are more of a diverse... A population of people will need it. Now it's time to talk about cutting it. It's time to talk about doing something else. It's time to talk about shifting in a different direction so that we can continue to take care of ourselves. That that's that's the intent. It never was intended for us. Let me just put it plainly. So you should know that when you think about Social Security. Uh, I want. I know we we are about a minute over. I just want to ask this question because I know most of our crowd are in retirement or near retirement age. And so if we're in that situation now and we haven't planned uh, and, and we're, we're struggling to make ends meet for a person like, is it too late? That's the question. Is it too late for me in my situation to start somewhere? That's the question I'm throwing on the table. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, it's 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 never too late to 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 save for retirement. It's never never too late to start. You know, um, I've I've uh, worked with so many individuals who similarly are in those those predicaments. Um, one that come comes to mind, I can think of someone you know, 58 years old, having had no money saved for retirement, and then uh, you know, in the next 10 years. Uh, amassed a portfolio of close to three hundred thousand dollars, you know. So uh, three hundred thousand wasn't going to take care of everything, but but that was a heck of a lot better than where you know she was, you know, ten years prior. So um, you know, sometimes that entails, uh, you know, um, um, you know, uh, going longer. You know, like my dad always say. My dad used to always say, "Hey, son." Um, there's a price to pay for based on procrastination, except when you pay it on the back end, you're going to pay it with interest. Mm -hmm. and, and because we put some of those things off, we're, we're going to pay it with interest, meaning instead of retiring at 70, we may have to wait till 75. You know, we may have to go to 80. You know what I mean? And, and that's because of our sheer, um, you know, denial or sometimes ignorance of, of exactly what is what is important. So um, it, it's it's never too late, but we 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 have to start at, at some point. Amen. You have to come to face the grips to say, you know what, I I need help, you know, and and that's that's a humbling thing, but it always works, you know, favorably when you can do that. And that is so important. The last part of what you said, not only the first part of what you said, that we got to start, but the other part is what you said to admit I need help. And to seek out financial professionals such as yourself to get that help. I don't care where you are in life. It, it, th there are professionals like Brother Parker who are around to help us in these financial areas of our lives. 
uh, and, and, and especially in, the, in things that we don't understand the terminology. You seek help for everything else. You seek help for your health. Preferably, you seek help for your mental health, your physical health. Uh, you seek help uh, for your spirituality. Why not seek help in this area of your life, in your treasure? It's so important, and it is something that we should and must do, and it's something that we are supposed to do as being wise stewards, not only of our time, but of our talents and of our treasure. Wow. So I thank Brother Parker so very much tonight for sharing what he has shared. Uh, if you should have questions later on, he had you saw his contact information. Uh, if you don't have it, always don't don't hesitate to reach out to me and I'll give you his information again. I'll share it. I, I keep him on speed dial, y'all. Uh, so uh, prayerfully, you gain something from tonight's session and we're going to do it again next week. Amen. We're going to do it again. There's his information again. Uh, we're going to do it again next week. So please think of your questions. I'm going to put together a poll next week to ask you some questions just to kind of see where you are in your savings and investments. I'm not asking how much money you've amassed or nothing like that. I'm just trying to gauge whether you've been active in investing, uh, whether you need to start investing, uh, whether you are interested in, in this topic and gaining more knowledge of it, those types of questions so that we can steer you in the right direction. Amen? Amen. Come on, let's pray. Dr. Harrell, you, you still there with us? Is he able to unmute? I think he's looking for that unmute button. <laughs> well, all right. So, I'm already. Yeah, come on, pray for us. Pray us out of here. Eternal and everlasting God, we come before you today in the name of Jesus, mm -hmm. thanking you for the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. We praise you and we worship you because you're worthy yes. to be praised. You are Lord of Lords and you are King of Kings. You have all power in your hand, creator and sustainer mm. of the universe. And Lord, we thank you because we thank you for the, the gifts that you have provided us with. We thank you for, for salaries. We thank you for, for wealth that you have allowed us to accumulate. And so Lord, we just thank you right now for Brother Parker uh, and uh, Sis Parker and uh, our pastor. We just thank you for uh, allowing us to be to 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 be uh, able to listen in and 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 receive what you yes. have for us. This is important. Yes. This is this to fit us down the road. So, Lord, we just praise you and worship you, glorify you and magnify you. And not only that, Lord, we ask that you would bless each and every listener, oh God, and let us be let us be wise stewards. Of what yeah. you have given us, oh God. And yes. we ask that you bless Brother Parker. Bless him, Lord, and be with him and uh in everything that he does. And yes, we just Lord. ask that you bless the members of the Living Water AME Church, Lord, and ask yes. us to be wise to us. So we just want yes. to thank you for it. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Yes. Amen. 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 Thank Amen. you so very much. God church bless open. everyone. God, thank you so very much, Brother Parker and Sister Parker, once again. We look forward to seeing you next week. Uh, prayerfully, your schedule will allow, and we'll put the topic out for everyone in advance. God bless you all. Have a wonderful night. Amen. 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 Amen.